This is Pony Prepper Bill. Today is Monday, October 25th, 2021. I'm out here at Crowley's Landing. Uh, the water is super high. Oh, I got bugs and bees all over. Uh, the last couple days, oh, got some nasty bugs out here. Got a couple boats and jet skis out here. You're probably going to pick them up or probably hear them. Uh, went out to um, the Forsyth Wildlife Area a couple times this week. Supposed to be nice out. Sun popped. It was gorgeous. All the the color, the, the leaves are changing color. We get down there, and just as we were getting ready to pull in, it started to, to rain. Clouds came in, dark, dreary, gray. Wind picked up. And then we were out there yesterday, and I was going to... Sun was out, got there, got all gray again, and it was just so dry. Every time I set the camera up, there were so many people there, it was like a freaking holiday. Every time I set the camera up, you got 10 cars gone by and all the dust, so I'm covering the camera up. And wait for them to go by, you pull the camera out, and then cars go by. Just... But we got gas in the truck, we went shopping the other day, and I mean, we've noticed the shortages, you know, all year long, here and there. But last year, I had a book, a little notebook, and I would write, every time I got gas, I'd write the mileage down, how many gallons I got, how much it was, trying to figure out how many miles a gallon I was getting. And I stopped doing it. But just for the hell of it, I went to get a piece of paper for something, and I looked, and I'm like, oh, look at this. Last year, I was paying two fifteen a gallon for regular. To fill my truck up, you know, usually if, if I run it pretty low, which I used to do, it would cost me like $50, $55 to fill the truck up. The other day we paid $3.43 a gallon. That was like $83 to fill my truck up. And if I only do it once a week, which I drive all over and I do different stuff, so sometimes I'll fill it up twice a week. But that's 125 bucks a month plus. That's crazy. We went to Aldi's because, you know, we used to just go to one place to go shopping. But now the way things are, we, we got split it up. We'll go to Aldi's. We'll go to ShopRite. We'll go to BJ's. Certain things you get is a good deal. Some things it's really not a good deal. The wind's picking up. I don't know if just microphone's going to pick this up. Um... Aldi's, they had plenty of canned food. They had plenty of meat and uh, chicken. But everything else was pretty much gone. No paper towel. Well, they had a couple paper towels. No toilet paper at all. They usually have a couple different kinds. No toilet paper. We needed uh, some paper plates because we feed the pigs on paper plates sometimes. No paper plates. No napkins. And the main thing we needed was aluminum foil. We usually get bulk, because we go through tinfoil a lot, we'll get bulk at BJ's. Don't have the money for that right now. We just figure, well, we'll just get, you know, a, a roll there. None. ShopRite, nothing. Same thing. Plenty of food, but everything else is gone. And, you know, you talk to other people, and they're like, oh, shortages, oh, here we go. Uh, you know, I haven't noticed it. Well, you know, my son-in-law, he goes to Wawa, that's his place to go, and he likes their iced tea. Can't get it. He said the last couple days, because I've noticed in the refrigerator, he, their top shelf is always his iced tea. There isn't any. So I thought maybe he's changing brand, or he's going on a diet and not drinking that or something. He said, ooh. The last couple days he's been coming home, he's hit four or five Wawa's every day, and they don't have it. So I stopped there to get something earlier today, and I, I don't do the Wawa thing, but I had to go there to get some stuff, and they had like nothing, no water, uh, very rarely, or not much water, no iced tea, and that was even their brand. No Wawa iced tea of any, any flavor, any kind. Um, things are getting pretty bad here. I mean, food-wise, you know, it, it's, hit or miss. Sometimes it's, it's low, sometimes it's not. But another thing 
you know, I keep hearing the worker shortage and all these people are going to lose their homes. People weren't paying rent. People weren't paying mortgages and people are going to lose the house they had that they were renting out. All these people, there's nobody's working. There's a shortage everywhere. Nobody wants to work. And, you know, I'm, I'm going by what I'm hearing, but I don't know anybody that's out of work. This whole, during this year and a half, two year pandemic, whatever it's been, I don't know anybody that's lost their job. I don't know anybody that didn't pay their rent or didn't pay their mortgage. Uh, do you? I mean, I know a lot of people. And I know uh, the one guy, he worked for the township. And, you know, when this whole thing was real bad, they didn't lay anybody off. They, uh, were working instead of five days a week, six days a week, they were working like two, two days this week, two days next week, or three days. It was like two days on, three days off, and then three days on and two days off. But they were getting full pay, and he loved it. He had weekends off, and he was only working two or three days a week for full pay. I know a couple other people that were um, laid off when the pandemic first hit, but it was a temporary laid off and they were getting like partial pay or well, I don't know the people it was a friend of mine works at you know a, a tire warehouse and he was still there but he said they laid a lot of the guys off in the warehouse because nobody was buying anything nobody was buying tires at the time but I mean they were getting partial pay and you know they're all back to work now so I don't know where this everywhere I go there's signs that say, you know, hiring, we need help. But I saw that three, four, or five years ago. So is there really a shortage? Are people not working? Because I, I don't see it. You know, maybe you do. I just haven't seen it. You know, if you have, let me know. And, you know, where you are, like, what stores don't have people. People are quitting. I mean, I think they're getting other jobs or something. But I don't see people not working. <coughs> I know, uh, you know, a friend of mine, he's a truck driver, and he's, he's been working overtime, extra hours, and he drives cross country, and he's, he doesn't see a shortage, I mean, he knows, you know, things aren't getting delivered and stuff, so they say, but, you know, he's, he's running constantly, so I don't know what's true, what's not, what to believe, what not to believe. I mean, I see stuff's not on the shelves, but as far as people not working, I, I, I don't, I haven't seen that. And the other thing was, uh, two or three weeks ago when I went to the dump, you know, we have to go to the dump, and it's just a little thing, they got two giant dumpsters, you throw your stuff in there, and you pretty much know everybody in town, it's a small frickin' town, there's only 800 people or 1,200 people live in town. And you see the same people there at the dump. I saw two cars there one time from Connecticut and Rhode Island. A uh, guy had a trailer and didn't know where to dump stuff because you have dumpsters for, well, this just got real dark. You have dumpsters for cardboard and plastic and then you have the, the big trash dumpsters. He's like, oh, where do I put this? I didn't know where to go, what to do. And I'm looking at the tag, it says like Connecticut. I didn't say anything. There's a guy that works there just sitting, you know, sleeping in a in the tractor just watching everybody. You're supposed to have a sticker to let him know that you're supposed to be there. We saw, like two weeks ago, we saw a minivan throwing stuff in a dumpster and it was trash. They weren't throwing it in a big dump. They were throwing it in a recycling thing. And they were wearing turbans, speaking a different language had jersey tags went to Wawa today and I saw a couple people wearing camo not military fatigues but you know camo like I wear <coughs> and he was in the parking lot long hair Ow. he didn't have a turban but he had some kind of hat thing on or bandana thing and he's singing to some girl in the car and that was a different language 
uh, not Spanish or Mexican, it was something else. And somebody was talking about, like in New Jersey, not far from us at McGuire, Fort Dix Air Base, to have a lot of those refugees, like 10,000 refugees there, in a tent city called Liberty Village or something like that. Well, somebody was commenting that a lot of them aren't there anymore. They let them, they evidently found houses or they knew people that lived here and they were allowed out. So they're, they're getting them houses and they are spreading out through these different communities. Now, somebody was commenting that there's like 10,500 supposedly that landed here in New Jersey at this base. And that's more people than the three surrounding towns or the four surrounding towns combined. So where these people are going to go, I, I don't know. There's a couple more things I wanted to talk about, but I think I'll skip that for another video because I'll probably get taken down. I didn't want this one to get taken down. So have you seen the prices going up? Uh, somebody told me before, like, oh, well, you know, your gas is three fifty a gallon. You know, that's nothing. You know, California's five bucks. It's been five bucks. That's pretty freaking bad. I can imagine that. Um, so where you are, wherever you are, how much is gas where you are? And has it gone up? They were talking about when the Colonial Pipeline shut down, gas went up. And it went up here pretty freaking hard. And then it said, you know, everything opened up, gas prices are going to go down. And then, you know, and my news thing on my phone, uh, New Jersey gas prices are going to go down on Friday. They didn't. They went up 10 cents. Supposed to go down like 10, and it went up 10. It's all bullshit. And my wife was talking about this freaking storm is supposed to get a nor'easter, like in a couple hours. I think, it, is that a nor'easter this time of year? Severe flooding, heavy winds seven to eight inches of rain expect power outages and i'm like i didn't hear anything about it i looked at the weather app on my phone it says sunny 50 percent to 80 percent chance of light rain at midnight the next two days 50 percent chance of showers i'm like and then you listen to the radio oh prepare for what we had when i went to forsyth last week and i filmed in that when the water was real high you should see it here. I'm here at Crowley's Landing, and the water is super high, super high. I mean, it's almost over the bridge over here, the walking bridge. You know, another six inches, and you won't be able to come out here. I mean, it's almost over the bank right now. If we get any more rain, this is going to be underwater. So what do you believe? You know, the TV, uh, the radio, your weather app, they all contradict everything. Partly sunny. No, storm, showers, power outages. So we went and got a couple couple gallons of gas for the generator in case it goes out. Uh, check the firewood. We have some firewood on it. I'm going to have to get some more firewood after the freaking storm. Oh, my God. Just one thing after another after another. This is Pony Prepper Bill, and maybe I'll make another video, or maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Bye-bye.